Hello and welcome back to Forza Motorsports Lightning Laps. We are back at Virginia International Raceway. And look at this, we have a camera angle. It's not a void of death. We can actually see the car. The update did something. It didn't fix a lot of the problems. It certainly didn't fix the upgrade system enough for me to do it, a build series. But it fixed the camera. It's it's progress. It's a start. We still we have a long way to go, but we're starting out with the Jag XKRS GT. I quite like this car. It's not very fast. I think it's what mid A class, high A class. It's a track version ish of the XKRS. Now that's a great little GT car. Real fun riding this machine in the proper Jaguar sort of a way. This is sort of half and half. They try to do it both ways. It's kind of comfortable on the inside. It's got a decent interior, but it's supposed to be a track car. So it's kind of comfortable, probably too comfortable for a track weapon and not track focused enough to be a track weapon, which means it's just sort of there. However, it has a massively supercharged V8 and it is an absolute riot through these corners. I love it to death. That doesn't mean it's fast, though. I mean, sure, it can hold its own against cars from a similar era or order, but once you start getting above A-Class, it really does show. It's not one of those underdog cars where it can carry the corner speed and lose time in the straight, but it's fine because it can make up so much time. It's not something like that. It really does just sort of lose a little bit, a few tenths in every single sector. And although I like how it drives, I like the supercharger getting enough torque to pull it out in the corners in second gear without issue, and I like the traction, it's not fast. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember the Corvette going around here, but um, the Corvette was a lot more composed and a lot faster accelerating. Now I should emphasize again for those of you who are unfamiliar, the replay cameras, I do one warm-up lap and five flying laps. And usually that means the fastest lap is the sixth lap, the final one, and the replay just ends as soon as you cross the line. And I don't want that to happen for the recording, so we're just sort of showing a half-decent run. The replay camera's sort of broken in this game. I mean, forget the whole disappearing scenery for a while in the first episode. It just ends randomly sometimes. I don't know why. Maybe it's a time. It runs out after a certain time. Don't ask me, but it does run out at seemingly random points on the, on the circuit. Regardless, this is not our fastest run, at least visually speaking, but it is almost done going around the last corner, the never-ending start finish away straight, and it is the Jaguar going, going, and across the line! Next up is the complete other end of the spectrum, pretty much. Apart from the weight, they're pretty similar in terms of weight. This is the new Honda Acura NSX. It's a hybrid four-wheel drive V6 mounted in the middle. So it's got electric motors up front and a V6 out back with another electric motor helping fill in the gap between the turbocharger spools. It's a pretty serious car. Not as powerful as you would think for a mid-engine hybrid supercar. 570 horsepower is less powerful than the Corvette. But you know what it is? It's a budget hyper. It's a budget Porsche 918, and I kind of like that a lot, actually. I think it's a very underrated car, a perfect successor to the budget supercar, the original NSX from the 90s and 2000s. So I quite like it. I don't like how it drives, though. If you look through this corner here, the Corvette was incredibly fast. Even the Jag was pretty fast, but this, I had a break. I was able to eventually get a line that I could lift through there, but it was seriously unstable, and that is because of the bodywork. Specifically, the lack of aero for said bodywork. Even the drag, as slow as that was, it had canards, it had a wing, it could actually have some aerodynamic properties sucking it to the road, or pushing it to the road, for that matter. This doesn't have that. I love the look of it. It's very clean. It's very stylish. It's not fast, though, because, well, Porsche and McLaren know it. Sometimes the best way to make your car fast is to make it ugly. Lots of dive planes, lots of splitters and canards and wings. It's not pretty, but it's functional. 
And this is an example of why you want that. This is a pretty over series car, despite being a four wheel drive. I think it has, I know it has a huge rear bias, but I think that it just doesn't have the tire sizes to match the power delivery from the electric motors and the turbocharged engine. So I think its power delivery is too ferocious for the rear and the mid engine layout and the lack of air really wanted to swap ends. You gotta be pretty careful with this thing going around the course. But if you do get it right, it's pretty quick. It's S-Class, again, four-wheel drive, 500 plus horsepower, it's gonna be a fast car. Would it beat the Corvette though? No, I'll give you a hint, no, it, won't. it will not beat the Corvette. But the question is, can it beat the Subaru, which has racing slicks and aero, but this has a lot more power in four-wheel drive? Well, we're about to find out at the end, or I'll still show the times at the end, but we're gonna find out just when this car finishes its run, it's going, and it finishes it, right now. But we have one final car. I like to spice up. I like to use a car for the third vehicle of the day that is not on Car and Driver's Lightning Lap, usually a race car, just because I find it interesting to see how road cars compare to race cars. And last time I did a modern day touring car, and today I did a 1930s Indy car, the Maserati 8 CTF. 1939 is this. Poland was still a sovereign nation when this came out. I mean, it is now, but very quickly after this debuted, it was no longer a sovereign nation. And it's very old, and it's got very skinny tires, and it has as much power as a Subaru, with no aero. And it weighs almost half as much. It is half a ton lighter than the Subaru, and the Subaru is a very light touring car. So, <laughs> it's a bit of a beast. It's a bit of a beast. It's not fast at all, as you would expect. Yes, it's A-Class, but... It's A-Class because of its immense straight-line speed, not the handling. It's You definitely have to slide it about. It, the rotation of the tires, I can, I, not rotation parallel to the axle, or perpendicular to the axles, but more the rotation of the angle of the car, is you get a lot more grip by sliding it just enough, not a drift, just really helping those tires get the maximum grip by rotating it into the corner. So like a much more extreme version of Schumacher did with his Ferrari. And um, that means it's not fast on Forza. Forza doesn't usually like that. Now Motorsport or Horizon has historically liked a little bit of sideways action with these things, or just any car in general. And it's a shame because this is how you drive a vintage Grand Prix car, a vintage Indy car in this case. So yes, it actually has more power than the Subaru, um, but it's not going to come anywhere near anything on this hill. This is merely just for my interest. Obviously, this is going to be at the last portion of the table, just by age and tire size. But I'm curious. I'm curious to see how far it will be behind, see if it can beat any road cars they may run later on, because there are plenty of very slow vehicles that have been run in Lightning Lap. Lightning Lap is not just for the fastest of the fast, it's also for more normal vehicles, if you can call a Volkswagen Golf R normal, but, you know, semantics. So we shall see how this fares. Um, I think... This course does not flatter it. Yes, it has some long straightaways, and yes, it's going to really like the start-finish line. But it's just too twisty. There's lots of medium-speed corners, a few high-speed corners, and it really hates those a lot for obvious reasons. But it is going to have a lot of power and a surprising amount of acceleration for the era, going around this final corner across the line. So, what is... The leaderboard going to say, pretty much as he expected. The Chevy Corvette decimated everyone still. The NSX was within four and a half seconds. Yeah, the NSX is not a particularly slow car. It's not the fastest, but it's not a slouch. And it was four and a half seconds down the Corvette. The Jaguar does good beating the Ford GT for how focused the GT was in terms of handling the dimension layout. That's pretty good given that it is, you know, the Jaguar is a touring, is a grand touring car. Both those cars are pretty far off the pace of the Subaru, which does fractionally get beaten by the Acura. I mean, it's very close between those guys. It's actually close between the Ford GT 
and the Jag as close as the NSX and the Subaru. A very close uh, leaderboard already. We're only two episodes in. Good sign for the future. And then there's the Maserati, which is just sort of happy to be there. What is it, eight seconds down on the Ford GT? That's a lot of time. I mean, it's within 10 seconds. I'm given that it's, what, 70 years older than the GT near enough? I will take eight seconds all day long. But that'll be it for this episode of Forza Motorsport Lightning Laps, and I'll be back with more.